Do you want to go outside? You want to go outside? Oh! Go, 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 go! Poker for Pound Pups, vlog 20? I think we're on vlog 20. We've been running really good lately. Uh, updates. Four colors are on the way. I don't think we'll have it ready for this vlog, but I think it'll be ready for either 21 or 22. So that's exciting. And um, I just want to keep playing my game. If I get a chance to play 3-5 and that's the only thing I can play, I'll play it. But otherwise, I don't want to mess with success. Let's see if we can keep that 1-3 streak going. Let's go play some cards. First hand of the session, ace-jack offsuit from the hijack. I raise to 18 and get called by the small blind. King, 9-8 with two diamonds. The board favors him. I don't have a ton of equity, so I'm gonna go ahead and bet. If I take it down, great. If he check raises me, I can easily get out of the way. And if he happens to call, it gives me two free streets to improve. I make it 20 and the small blind puts in the call. Turn comes in the queen of spades, so now any 10 would give me the straight, and if it's not a diamond, it would be the nuts. When the small blind checks, I decide to check it back with a low equity draw that comes through 10 of spades on the river. Now the small blind leads for 45, and it's just a matter of how big do I go. I settle on 145 and unfortunately get no action, but nice to river a straight, especially going runner runner to get there. King Jack offsuit from the hijack under the gun raises to 10. This is a kid who's been pretty nervous and based on his mannerisms, it's clear he hasn't played a lot of live poker. When he bumps it to 10, I make a rare call with King Jack offsuit, anticipating that I can make positive EV decisions after the flop. Unfortunately, this invites the big blind to call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop of King Queen seven rainbow. We've got top pair. It checks to the kid. He continues for 15. I make the call and the big blind comes along as well. So I've got no idea where I stand. The turn comes in a six of hearts. The kid continues for 50. This is a little bit troubling, but I make the call and the big blind folds. Rivers the four of clubs. Thankfully, he slows down with a check and I check it back. Surprisingly, under the gun shows king nine suited. So we were ahead the whole way. Pretty, pretty lucky that all he had was a weak king. King deuce of spades from the low jack. Early position raises to 10, and I go ahead and make the call along with two others, and we get a solid flop of 10-4-3 with two spades. The initial raiser checks, I check, and it checks around, and we get there on the turn, the five of spades. Now the initial raiser bets. He makes it 50 to go, and I take a look at his stack, and he's got about 215 left. I don't think there's enough in the pot to justify shoving, I go ahead and bump it up to 115, and if he happens to shove, I'll of course call. It folds back around and the initial raiser makes the call. Ace of hearts comes in on the river. He checks, I think about it for a minute, and then I go all in. He actually thinks about it for a while. He really is getting pretty good pot odds here, as it's 150 for him to win a pot of 570. He thinks better of it though and folds, and we take it down. Pocket tens from the low jack, I raise to 15. It folds around and the big blind does basically a min raise, clicking it up to 35. He's only got a little over 70 bucks left, so I just go ahead and move all in. He makes the call. Something of note is that quad tens are worth $1,200, so I get a pretty good little rush when the flop comes out jack 10-8. Sadly, we don't improve as the turn is the queen of spades and the river is the deuce of hearts and the big blind turns over ace king offsuit. We lose the flip to ace king. Glad he was short stack because that one would have been pretty costly. We chip down a hundred bucks or so and move on to the next hand. Button straddles on and we've got pocket eights. We raise it to 23. The low jack makes the call and everyone else folds and we flop top set on eight, five, three. It's a pretty safe board. There's not a flush draw out there. And most of the time my raising range is gonna miss this board. So I check and the low jack checks it back. 
turns the seven of clubs. Now I need to start betting. I make it 30, and thankfully the hijack raises to 80. He's only got 150 left in his stack. I'm out of position, so there's only one move here. We're all in for 230, and the hijack snap calls. I don't love the river, which is the six of spades, but I show my eights, and the hijack shows seven three of diamonds. Not sure why he's playing that hand, but he would have coolered me if I had an overpair. Top set is good. Glad that I happen to have it this time around, and we scoop a $510 pot. Pocket tens again. Let's get quad tens for 1200 bucks. Under the gun limps. I bump it up to 15 and it folds back around to under the gun who makes the call. Flop comes out 10, 8, 3. Once again, we've flopped a set of tens. One away from 1200 bucks. When under the gun checks, I of course am going to see the free card. And that comes in the ace of hearts. My opponent has a little bit more than $100 left. So I'm not too worried if he ends up out drying us. I think it's worth it to just go ahead and check again with hopes of improving the quad. So that's what I do. And sadly, we see the king of hearts come in on the river. My opponent checks. I stick out a bet of 15 and he min clicks it to 30. I consider moving all in, but he got to the river for free. And I don't think he's calling me with anything less than two pair if I happen to shove. I'm also just not sure what he's check raising me with other than a straight or a flush. So I just go ahead and make the call and he turns over ace deuce for just top pair. Uh, I was waiting for that last 10. Oh, where's the 10 at? Three tens are gonna get it. We miss out on quad tens again, but a pretty fun little sweat nevertheless, and we scoop a little pot. Pocket aces for middle position. I bump it up to 15, and the hijack and the button both call. There's nothing worse than going four or five ways to a flop with aces. But the small blind comes through for us. He three bets to 90 bucks. It folds to me and I take note of his stack. He's got $180 left. I'm not really sure what the right play here is to shove, call, or maybe min raise. If I shove, he's going to call me with all of his pairs that are tens and higher. But then I'm folding out all of his bluffs. If I call, I'm inviting the other players to come in at a discount. And remember, if I do a min raise, it's not like he can come back over the top to go all in because it would be a third raise, which is a cap in the state of Washington. So I'm not really sure what the right play here is. In the moment, I decided I would just go ahead and move all in. So that's what I do. The two players who called get out of the way and the initial raiser says, I was hoping you wouldn't do that, but I can't fold now. He makes the call, so we've got a $580 pot, and we get the run out of Jack 4-3, 7-6, all black. Oh, no way. Okay. Okay. Nice yeah, man. No, you're good. The small blind apologizes and shows King Queen of Spades. Sounds like he's been there before to get his aces cracked. I tap the table, congratulate him. Kind of a bummer to lose a $600 pot with aces, but hey, we got it in good. We'll take those odds any day of the week. This ended up being my favorite hand of the day. We've got seven five of clubs from the big blind. A tight player in the cutoff raises to 15, and the splashy player sitting in the small blind makes the call. I go ahead and call as well. Just for some background, the cutoff has been super straightforward and really hasn't raised much. He's straightforward to the point where if he's got ace king and he raises, even if it's just heads up, he will not see bet. So he's only betting after the flop when he's got something and he's checking it back when he doesn't. The small blind is a little bit of a spitfire. He's been chewing gum noisily. He splashes the pot when tossing in his chips. He's just a super cocky guy. A little bit earlier, he shoved all in on bottom pair and sucked out on a river trips and gave the other person an attitude when they questioned him about if he thought his pair of fives were any good. So that's what we're up against, despite his attitude. The annoying player in the small blind is good for the game, and I'm happy that he's seated to my right. Despite being in the middle of these two kind of polar opposite players, we go three ways to a flop. Can't ask for much more as we flop a great combo draw on 10-8-4 with two clubs. Small blind checks and I check in flow, and if the cutoff has something like ace-king or ace-queen, I'm pretty confident he'll check it back. If that happens, I plan to be aggressive on the turn regardless as to whether I get there or not. But if he c-bets, he almost assuredly has an overpair. 
so I probably won't be able to bluff him off it. Sure enough, he c-bets for $40 and the small blind calls, which I don't love, but sitting here with my combo draw, I can't fold. Since I don't think the cutoff is going to fold if I come way over the top, I decide to just go ahead and make the call. Interesting turn as the ace of spades comes in. Small blind checks. I check, and now the cutoff slows down, which makes me think he's got jacks, queens, or kings, and is afraid of the ace. River comes in the seven of spades, giving me a pair, and now the small blind bets 70 bucks. I think both players have it best one pair here, and the small blind has remarked a couple of times that I always have it. Based on my read, and the image that the small blind has of me, I think this gives me the chance to come way over the top. Even though I think the cutoff has the best hand here, I'm going to go ahead and raise to 200 because I think he's afraid of the ace, and I think the small blind is afraid of my image. So I make it 200 to go. The cutoff goes into the tank and ultimately folds, and then you can hear the small blind as he lets us know what he's going to do. I'll give you action, man. Was the pair good? Hmm? Pair was good? Was the pair good? Oh, I heard you. Oh, oh we're supposed to believe you had a pair there? I had a pair. Oh. Let me know in the comments, is this a good play because I read my opponents well, or is this a crappy play because my line just doesn't make any sense and I happen to get away with it? Well, we lost with aces. Let's see how we can do with kings. Two people limp and I bump it up to 18. And we get three callers, so we're going multi-way. They must have all had an ace as the flop comes out queen, nine, three with two diamonds. I've got no diamonds in my hand. I've got an over pair, so it's time to bet for value against all those single pair hands and also for protection against the flush draws. I make it 60 to go and the button calls. He's been pretty straightforward. He seems pretty inexperienced. The fact that he doesn't raise here confirms with me based on what I've seen from him throughout the day that I'm probably ahead and I think he's either got top pair or diamonds. The seven of hearts turn is pretty much a blank unless he happens to have something like nine, seven of diamonds. He's only got about 200, 210 bucks left. So it's kind of in that awkward in between spot about how much I should bet. If he's got a queen, I'm going to put him to the test. If he's got diamonds, he's only going to call a river bet if he happens to hit. So I want him to just go ahead and commit his chips now. I move all in for 210, and the button goes deep into the tank. In hindsight, this might be a little bit of an overplay, as I don't think he's calling with worse, and I'm basically just folding out everything that's not a set or two pair. That's what ends up happening. He folds. Maybe it ended up saving us some money as who knows what the river would have brought. But at least our kings hold up. We'll take the small pot and move on to the next hand. Queen seven of clubs in a bomb pot. For those of you who don't know, a bomb pot is something where everyone who wants to play puts in a certain amount of money before the flop. They get their two cards and we go straight to the flop without any pre-flop betting. This one comes out. Queen seven three. We've got top two pair. So when the splashy player on the big blind leads for 40, I go ahead and raise to 120. It folds back around and he makes the call. So we've got a pot of almost 300 bucks and get the turn of the two of clubs. Sitting here with top two pair as well as a flush draw against a splashy player, I'm gonna just go ahead and commit his entire stack. I make it 300 to go. He thinks about it for a little while and ultimately folds. In hindsight, this might be a bit of an overplay again. On the one hand, I'm protecting my stack and my equity, but on the other hand, I might be missing out on value by going so heavy. Something to note for future hands, we'll take down another medium-sized pot. This one's definitely the weirdest hand of the day as we've got ace-queen offsuit from the low jack. The splashy player in front of us makes it 15 to go and I three bet as I normally would to 45. Two players behind me make the call and then the splashy player decides it's time to go ahead and rip his entire stack in. He's only got 115. Under normal circumstances, I would probably raise again to go ahead and protect my equity. But in Washington, we're capped at three raises per street. So all I can do is either call or fold, and we're probably not in great shape as it's likely that at least one or two of the other players have an ace as well. 
that means that any of these hands that have like eights or nines are probably going to have a pretty sizable lead. Nevertheless, I'm not going to fold here for just another 60, 70 bucks. I make the call and the two players behind us call as well. So we've got 460 in the pot and we go to a disgusting flop of 10, 9, 6, all black. It checks around, which is probably a good sign, and we get the turn of the five of spades bringing in a second flush draw. Given how the hand has played out, I guess I could try and bluff just to go ahead and try and fold everyone else out, but I'm still going up against the initial raiser. I think it's probably a punt to do anything other than to check, and thankfully everyone else thinks the same thing. River comes in the seven of clubs, so now there's a flush draw there, there's some straights out there, and I just go ahead and wave the white flag. I check, and thankfully it checks around. Out of the corner of my eye, it looks like the tentative player was about to turn over Jack Jack, but then the splashy player throws down his cards and says, ship it. At first glance, it looked like he had a flush, and then the other player mucked. But upon closer inspection, the splashy player had ace three offsuit and missed. So I show my ace queen, and somehow it ends up being good. Maybe the other player had ace jack, I don't know, but I was almost sure he had pocket jacks. I'm not sure if we really had the best hand or not, but I will take it. $460 coming our way. Last hand of the night and it's pocket jacks from the low jack. One person limps and I bump it up to 16. The cutoff and the limper make the call, so we're three ways to a nice flop of nine five deuce. I bet for value and to protect my equity, I make it 40 and the cutoff makes the call. He's only got 50 bucks left, so when the turn comes in the four of hearts, I go ahead and move all in. He tanks for a minute, shrugs, and makes the call. The river comes in the king of hearts and the cutoff shows king five of spades. He called me with second pair and ends up rivering two pair. Happy with how I played this one. Just got a bad river, that's poker. We're going to go ahead and rack up and book a win. Let's head to the recap. So to recap last night, I think we had some really good runouts. We had the straight, the flush. Uh, we won another bomb pot. So overall, a lot of good going our way. Finally, checking came through for us as we flopped a set of eights. And then our opponent, who was playing garbage 7-3, happened to turn two pairs. So I felted him on that one. Oh. We got it in good with aces and with jacks. It didn't go our way, so obviously it could have been even better than it was. But overall, we were still in for 500 and out for 1649, a profit of almost 1150. We are just running insanely hot since the start of the year at 1-3. We had a few more hands with the audio tonight. Let me know in the comments if you like that or if it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, four colors are in production. Obviously, wasn't ready for. Four colors are in production. Obviously, it wasn't ready for today's video, but hopefully that'll be ready soon. And then we'll be going to Portland in a few weeks to check out their poker scene and just the area in general. So, so I think that's all I got for today. Uh, if you like the video, hit like, uh, subscribe, share the video with a friend. Until next time, this is Wes for Poker for Pound Pup signing off. Have a good one. Hey everybody, subscribe here to catch the latest episodes. Also, hit that like button and share these videos with anyone who might enjoy them. Doing that really helps the channel and its goal to support dog shelters. So thanks for watching Poker for Pound Pups and have a great day.